Okay, I'm sure most folks have a fair idea of what to wear when working out on the rowing machine, but I want to talk about a few things that you may not have thought about. And hey, if nothing else, you get to see me in a kilt. I'm going to cover shoes in another video, but as far as clothing decisions are concerned, the main things to consider when choosing what to wear are that nothing gets caught under the seat, nothing rubs against you during the stroke, you feel comfortable moving in it, it won't make you overheat, should you be wearing anything at all, and what about gloves and sweatbands? Now there is a perfect item of clothing for rowing that covers most of these, the uni suit, an all-in-one suit, top and bottoms attached, made from soft stretching material with seams that are flat and won't rub against you. And with a built-in gusset, there's no need for underwear either. Woo. However, as common as these may be in the boat club or on the race floor, you might want something a little less full-on to wear to your local gym. In which case, here's what I suggest you think about. Clothing that's too long at the back runs the risk of getting caught under the seat. That said, for that to happen, you may be sitting too far back on the seat, and probably with poor posture, hips rolled back with your tailbone tucked underneath you. And this will happen more commonly with longer hoodies and tops than it will with t-shirts, but do be aware of the length of what you're wearing. And the same advice goes for any tassels or drawstrings on shorts. Make sure that nothing is dangling so that it's not going to get caught at the front or the back of the seat. Seams and labels may not feel like they're causing you discomfort at first, but once you're a thousand strokes into a long row, that label that's been sticking into your side or the rough seam on your t-shirt or sock can really start to chafe. I sometimes do a 10 minute cool down on the rower after I've done an indoor bike session but I'm too lazy to change out of my padded cycling shorts. Now the seams on those pads are just not designed to move the way I do when rowing, and I nearly always end up with some kind of irritation at the end. You really think I'd learn. And don't just think about your shorts and t-shirts either. Underwear can be the main culprit when it comes to rubbing. Seams from underwear or bra straps and underwires digging into your body can lead to real discomfort by the end of a row. Comfort isn't just about making sure nothing rubs or gets stuck, it's about making sure what you're wearing fits the way you want it to. It makes sense that what you wear has a bit of give to it. I'm not talking 1980s day glow spandex and lycra, just a bit of stretch so that it moves with you as you go through the stroke and doesn't bite into you, hindering your movement. Maybe you prefer loose clothing when rowing. As well as making sure it doesn't get caught anywhere, check it won't start flapping about uncomfortably and that you have to stop every few strokes to adjust it. <laughs> you might prefer tight fitted t-shirts and shorts. Just make sure it doesn't constrict you anywhere. I've got a lovely shirt that I race in, but it does sit quite high up on my neck and sometimes feel like it's choking me. Although with that beard and haircut, maybe it would have choked some sense into me. <laughs> And then there's the range of compression clothing that's designed to be soft but really tight to help your muscles get oxygen when you're exercising. Again, making sure the compression isn't restricting your movement is important. They're usually quite elastic, but the one compression top that I have kind of ends up around about my belly button by the end of a row as it doesn't cope well with that constant body rock. So I'm playing the personal preference card here. If you've got experience with compression shorts and t-shirts and like them, then why not try it on the rowing machine? Or maybe you're just interested to see if it'll help your muscles and want to give them a try. Now as well as t-shirts and shorts, don't forget about socks. An old rough pair of socks can feel nasty in your shoes, whereas a new soft cotton pair can f Ugh, Am I overplaying socks? I am, aren't I? But I row in socks, that's the thing, so making sure the heels are comfortable and there's no holes underneath is very important to me. But again, don't overlook your underwear here. Too tight and you could end up in quite considerable discomfort by the end of a row. And even though it's not an impact sport, women may want to wear a sports bra if it helps with comfort when rowing. Heat control is probably the most important aspect of what to wear alongside not causing you pain. 
Ideally, you want to choose clothing that won't make you hotter when you row. And even better, something that helps to cool you down during the row can be useful. Climbing onto the machine to do a 10k row in a thick hoodie and fleecy tracksuit bottoms is going to leave you completely overheated only a few kilometres into the row, whereas lighter shorts and a vest will let the air flow over your body, helping to stop you from overheating too soon. You may not want to row in a vest though, I'll wear one at home but I wouldn't want to wear one in the gym, much preferring a t-shirt. And it's a good idea to pick a material that won't hold on to any moisture and cling to your body. Breathable, technical t-shirts are much better for rowing in, as they wick the sweat away, helping you to cool down. Whereas cotton t-shirts tend to hold on to the sweat, sticking to your body, and even if that doesn't heat you up, it can feel really nasty and heavy during a row. Not something I've tried, don't worry, and I'm not even going to consider describing the upsides and downsides of rowing in the buff. But I'll admit that on a hot summer's day, I'll wheel the machine out into the garden and row without my t-shirt on. Don't worry, I'll never subject you to that on here. I'll leave that to the other guys. Obviously, the upside of rowing without a t-shirt on is that you're letting heat escape from your body without a t-shirt trapping it. But I have to say, the times I do row without a shirt on, my shorts end up soaking wet due to all the sweat running down my body. And that's not just an unflattering image, it's also quite uncomfortable to row with a wet bottom. <laughs> Maybe if I had the body of a crossfitter, I'd be more inclined to put up with that. But I'll stick to shorts and a t-shirt for the sake of everyone around me, apart from my poor neighbours. Now I've only really talked about t-shirts, shorts, hoodies and underwear so far. What about gloves and sweatbands? And you know, there's probably a whole video of its own to be made about gloves. Probably quite a dull one though to be fair, which is why I've put it into this one. And much like nearly everything else in this sport, gloves are a personal preference. I know people who wouldn't even look at a rowing machine before putting on a pair of weightlifting gloves. Whereas all I've ever got from gloves is blisters and frustration. Because it is common when people first start rowing for their fingers to suffer a little bit, especially if their technique isn't good and they're gripping onto the handle for dear life. But it's just a consequence of doing something that they've never done before. Much like when you get muscle soreness in your legs the day after going for a run for the first time in ages, your body just isn't used to it and needs to repair itself so it can do it again without pain. And this is why blisters turn into calluses. Usually though, after a few rows, and especially if the rower calms down that death grip, this does tend to settle down. Now the reason I'm harping on about loose grip on the handle is because it not only causes less blister causing friction, reducing the creation of calluses, but an open grip also keeps the airflow up around your hands, letting them cool down and not get wet from sweat, which causes blisters. Try it! Instead of choking the life out of the handle, just hook your fingers over it, thumbs lightly touching your index finger. This not only gives you that all-important airflow, but it can give you an extra centimetre of length to the stroke, and it'll help you hang off the handle and really get the power transfer flowing into the machine. But some folks just never get to grips hey, you see what I did there? with how their hands feel, and prefer to use gloves, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. If you do think that gloves are the way to go, think about all the things I've already said. Comfort, heat control, nothing rubbing. You need to make sure that they're going to help your rowing and reduce your chances of discomfort rather than cause more. Fingerless gloves with an open back can help with airflow. Just be sure that the point where the material stops doesn't actually cause a blister. When I first went through the rowing hurts my fingers stage when I started, I tried wearing fingerless cycling gloves. But the material stopped right at the point where the handle connects with my fingers, so then I had the rough seam of the glove and the handle rubbing against my fingers. But then, full finger gloves? Well they just make my fingers feel sweaty just thinking about them. <laughs> so in the end, if you want to wear gloves, do some research, either on the Facebook rowing groups or just a Google search, and try to find out something that works for you be it full-fingered, fingerless, or even just weightlifting pads that aren't actually gloves at all.
Now, the last thing I'd say about gloves is that although I don't like them from a comfort or heat point of view, I also don't wear them for the same reason I don't use a seat pad or wear specific rowing shoes. I don't want to get into a position where I turn up to a race or even just the gym and can't perform because I don't have my special gloves, shoes or seat pad. Relying on something that I can and will forget is a recipe for disaster in my world. Sweatbands, either on the wrist or on the head, can offer you some relief when the going gets tough and sweaty. Now, you might think that a sweatband looks a bit 1970s squash player old school, but when you can't see the monitor because of the sweat running into your eyes, you'll not care how you look. They're maybe more helpful for those who don't have much hair to hold on to the sweat, but even if you've got a long mane of hair, if sweat runs into your eyes when you row, do consider a sweatband or even a bandana. And sweatbands for the wrist not only help you to keep your hands a little drier, if you wet them before a race, they can be a moment's relief as you wipe them across your mouth to moisten dry lips. It takes a bit of a skill to do that and not lose the stroke rhythm, but it may be a skill worth learning. I've been trying to be very careful through this whole video to really get across that it's what works for you that's best. I've just been trying to give you a few things to think about when packing your bag next time. Maybe you like to be really warm when you exercise and will row in a full fleece tracksuit. Maybe you have cold hands and will row in full winter gloves. Or maybe you spent such a long time working on your body, you're going to start rowing in your speedos. It's entirely up to you what you want to wear. Well, maybe the gym rules for that last one. As long as you're comfortable and it doesn't slow you down, you can wear what you want. That said, I don't think I'll be rowing in this anytime soon. It might get stuck under the seat. Ooh. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're interested in seeing any of my free row along workouts, then please check out this channel where there's currently right about 200 workouts, a 2K, a 5K and a 500 meter training plan. And I'm adding all the time. And if you wish, please click the subscribe and maybe the little bell icon to be notified when I put up a new workout or a chatty video like this one. Thanks again. Stay safe. Be well. Bye bye.